Hello everyone. This is what we're going to cook today. You know what this is? In Tamil, it's called Sorakai. In uh, Bahasa Malaysia, it's called Labu Botol because it actually, I mean, some of it, uh, it's a little, it's got a bit of a bottle shape. This one doesn't, but uh, some, of, some of them do. And in English, it's called, rightly called, uh, bottle god and as I mentioned before I hated everything to do with gods when I was young um, I didn't like them but now um, cooking these gods and eating them it's comfort food for me especially today's dish which is called Sorakai Kutu where I'm going to be using um, this dal which is called Grand Dal Okay, or in Hindi, I think it's Chana Dal, and in Tamil, it's called Hadalai Parupu. Okay, so I'm going to pressure cook the dal uh, to make it soft, and then I'm going to cook this um, this into a kutu, which I think in Tamil is like a something that's like a thick little um, dish, a, a, a gravy, a, a dish where the gravy is thick and uh, sort of mushy as well, but yummy. <laughs> So, first of all, we prep the chana dal or gram dal in English or it's called, uh, in Bahasa Malaysia, I think it's kad, um, kacang kuda. Yeah, it's called kacang kuda and in Tamil, it's kadalai parupu. So, first of all, we have to either boil it or pressure cook it. If you want to boil it, you can boil it in a big pot or if you want to pressure cook it like me, I'm going to use a pressure cooker. But before you do that step, you have to soak the gram dal in water. So I have, uh, can you see that? It's soaked in water. And I have soaked my gram dal, you see, for about two or three hours because, uh, well, I let it soak and I was doing all kinds of other things today. But you don't have to soak it for so long. You can just soak it for about um, an hour or so. And then you can either boil it or you can pressure cook it. The longer you soak it, soak the dal, the quicker it gets cooked. That's about it. So I'm now going to add some water. I put it in the pressure. I put the dal in the pressure cooker. I'm going to add some water, just enough to cover it. That should be enough. Yeah, otherwise, it, I mean, it might just spurt out of the cover, and then it'll be like it'll make a mess. And I'm going to put a little bit of turmeric like that then I'm going to put some garlic in there a few, cl uh, a few cloves of garlic that I've just cut in uh, cut in half and uh, some salt okay. give it a stir Also some oil, just a little bit of oil, so that it kind of helps uh, um, helps in this whole process because it it, it ensures that uh, nothing, uh, no liquids come out of this. Even though it's the weight is on it, even though the weight is on it, while it it uh, you know it comes out uh, due to the steam, lots of dal will come out here as well. So. I prefer, I put, like putting some oil so that it uh, it helps with that whole process. Yeah, I'm going to cover it. Yeah. And I am not going to put this until, remember I mentioned that I will, I'm going to wait for the steam to escape and then I will put this and wait for about two whistles. So I'm peeling the bottle cord now. You can use a peeler or even a knife. But I do find that uh, when you use a knife, you tend to peel uh, a little the skin too thick. So you tend to waste the vegetable. Well, at least my mom used to tell me that. <laughs> and uh, I also find using a peeler a little easier. It's all what you want. It's, it's up to you what you want to do. Sometimes you, 
you might feel that a knife is more comfortable sometimes you might feel that you know a, a peeler is comfortable and right under the skin you notice that it's a little slimy but all vegetables are different aren't they and when you but when you cook this vegetable it doesn't feel uh, slimy so it's fine so now i'm slicing it into little circles and then i'm putting them together and uh, cutting uh, the bottle gourd flesh into cubes medium sized cubes because i find that quite uh, nice um, in a cooter so that's the way i do it but as i said is there's no hard and fast rules <laughs> it's all up to you how you want to cut it so these are the ingredients sliced onions sliced red chilies uh about 3 uh dry chilies that i have sort of like chopped it like this this maybe about half an inch half inch pieces curry leaves and then we have cubed bottle gourd some turmeric powder and then mixed spices and this is important uh whenever we cook any vegetable or any any dish with which contains dal or legumes and lentils and so on lentils especially we always use uh, asafoetida or in tamil it's called perangayam it comes in this form from the shops sometimes in there's many brands actually so this is uh, perangayam or in english it's called asafoetida and uh, we use this to help or to aid digestion you see whenever you eat um, uh, lentils it is said to sometimes make you feel a little bloated or you might have some kind of gastric colicky kind of feeling so uh, well my mom told me and i think basically that is why uh, indians use asafoetida uh, it basically to help with uh, you not you feeling comfortable after eating lentils another another ingredient that we always use with lentils is garlic so the garlic bulbs that i put into the garlic uh, cloves that i put into the pressure cooker earlier that that is also supposed to aid um against the colicky feeling or the gastric feeling that you have after eating too much of lentils so i put the pressure cooker on high heat and uh, remember i mentioned earlier that i would only put the weight when i see some steam escaping from this vent the reason being that uh to ensure that this uh, vent is not clogged because if the vent is clogged and then you put it in as well it could be dangerous that's what they that's what i've read before so i just wait for the steam to escape and then i put the weight onto onto the lid here and i wait for two whistles and then i take it off the heat and let it rest for a while you know i often hear that indian food is uh takes a lot of time it involves a lot of steps and processes and so on yeah well maybe it does but if you do some things a little ahead of time it makes the whole uh cooking process easier so what i do like um the dal okay that that is that is this of number 1 so after the second whistle i'll just move it aside to the um to to the to, to the area that's not uh, hot and i'll turn off the the heat okay um as i was talking uh, as I, as i was mentioned as i mentioned earlier i boil i boil more dal most of the time and then i just use the amount that is needed and freeze the the remainder dal so that's one way of me always having dal before number 2 setting up the heat and moving it on to the other side of the stove so this is where i uh, heated it uh, i i uh, pressure cooked it just now so now i'm going to leave it here until it's cool enough for me to open uh to re- to turn, take out the lid to open the lid so as i was saying earlier i prep food ahead because 
I like Indian food and when I cook Indian food, I make sure I have my ingredients sort of uh, semi done earlier or ahead of time. So I always have frozen dal in my fridge because I like adding dal to my vegetables. So just a quick digression. This is a packet of frozen dal. Okay, can you see that it's oh, it's a hard, uh, hard and frozen, and I've written here very mushy because it was way too mushy for my liking. So I just wanted to know that when I when I use it, so that I would use it in um, recipes that needed dal that was very mushy. Okay, so this is how I prep ahead. So if I wanted to make a sambar or something, I could just take this out and I could chop my vegetables and add it in. So much easier than cooking or pressure cooking or you know whatever that you have to do um, just before you actually cook the dish that you want to make. So let's see whether this is okay. So this is there's not much pressure coming out, so I've taken out the way. And now I think it's cool enough for me to open it. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't look very cooked. Let me just check. I'm still kind of like learning how to make recipes using the pressure cooker. So I do admit that it's very, very fast. It's much faster than boiling. Now this is still a little okay, that's okay. Look at that. It's mushy already. So see? So I this is ready to be used. If you want it cooked a little more, all you have to do is cook it with your with the other ingredients in your dish. So, as I mentioned, I've taken out some of the dal here and I've left some in the pot. I boiled a little extra. I boiled about two cups of chana dal. Two, cu two cups like this of chana dal. So, you don't really, if you want to just make a little bit, you can just boil about half a cup. That's enough. Or pressure cook half a cup. So, I've left some in here and now I'm going to add some salt and some water a little bit of water and I'm going to add the I'm going to add all the vegetables the cubed torokai or labu bottle okay and either you can uh, you can either cook it over over the stove just like this or you can pressure cook it again so if you cook it over a stove, it's, uh, it just takes a little bit longer. But if you pressure cook it a little bit more, uh, for maybe a, I think about one whistle, then the bottle gourd will be cooked and this will be a little bit more mushy as well. I think I'm going to put it, uh, leave it for about two whistles. So it's three whistles, not two. So I said two earlier, but I realized that uh, three whistles is a lot better. So. Um, food is the vegetables and the dal is cooked a little bit more um, just just a little diversion again I started this channel because I wanted to uh, do something different exciting do something challenging and I wanted to share my my feelings and my thoughts with others as well and I wanted to engage with others so um, the reason um, I'm saying this is because uh, I feel that, you know, sometimes when one hits midlife, you feel like, oh, you know, half the life is gone, you don't have much. But I don't want that. And I want to be, to, to live an exciting life, to live a healthy life, even after you hit your 50s. And I feel that um, one can take on a new challenge, even if you are in your 50s and uh, you can still look forward to exciting new beginnings and uh, discover exciting uh, journeys and um, challenges and so on. I, 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 I just feel that I could do something different at this stage in my life. Okay, so I'm now putting it back on the stove. As I mentioned earlier, it's I waited for three whistles and not two. Okay, so three whistles and um, I would prefer the dal to be a bit more mushy. So maybe the next time I make this, I should like, you know, do it for a longer time. So this is a little bit of water that I'm adding and I'm going to cook it further. I'm 
going to add a little coconut milk as well. Okay. I've moved my vegetable, my uh, dish to the other side. And now I'm going to heat up. I'm going to make my tadika or the talipa. And we, for this, I need a bit of oil. You, you can add ghee if you wanted to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. So I'm going to add a little bit of ghee. And now, as it heats, That to my mixed spices. The mezzo fatida. When you put in the mezzo fatida, it's always like so yummy. It smells so yummy. Okay, now you can see that it's already beginning to brown and it's going to start cracking. I put in all these ingredients earlier, which I mentioned the chilies, the onions, the curry leaves, and the dried chilies as well. One tea is brown. Put it, you can add it into the let this let this get brown first. Let this start sauteing until it's brown. Now I'm going to add the talipa to the okay. Put it over here. So here is my yummy sorokai kutu, a delicious comfort food that brings me back to childhood.